What's up guys and gals, my name is Splattercat and we are here at the Nerd Castle with the next episode of Nemoria. In the previous episode we had found ourselves basically just taking care of random busy work, making sure that we had gotten a lot of the iron out of the walls on the previous level. We're going to be continuing to do that in this episode, although not to the same extent. We've got enough iron right now to where I'm not completely and totally kind of racked with fear over the prospects of running out. However, with where we're sitting at right now, I think we're sitting... At around, oh, I think 130, 140 iron. And I think once we get rid of this layer, we should find ourselves back in the region of maybe 200. Which is going to be great. That saves us a ton of work later on. And we've done a ton of work so far. So I think we're a bit, a bit like, we got to be at least a little bit front logged on work anyway. So we owe ourselves a, oh my god. Okay. Well, this guy's coming. They all have armor. God, this is going to get really, really nasty. Well, let's go for it. And so off we run into combat. These goblins are heavily armed. Let's go ahead and we'll zoom on in for the duration. Come on, buddy. You can get over here. We need your help. Like, seriously, you should come hang out for a minute. Just for a minute. It looks like one of the goblins, zero nomads have arrived. That's pretty bad. That's not a good thing for us. We are going to want to be careful about gear being broken. This guy right here in particular appears to be quite terrifying. He's got himself an outfit. He's kind of doing like a Sauron type thing right now. Hopefully he doesn't run into the battlefield knocking people all over the place. Did anybody else, when you saw that scene, like when Sauron was walking onto the battlefield, just knocking like 80 people up in the air, it reminded me of Dynasty Warriors. That's what it reminded me of. I got Dynasty Warriors 8 for the PC the other night, and I am sad to say that the controls are absolutely abysmal. It's like whoever designed it never played a PC game before because there's no mouse control, which it would be easy. Like, for example, how I would do it is WASD would control movement, left click would be light attack, right click would be strong attack, E would be your Musao, and then, you know, it's that simple. Spacebar would be jump and you'd be good to go. And that would be my controls for Dynasty Warrior on the computer. Instead, they did something just ridiculous with it. So I'm using an Xbox controller. Still not that great at controls on the Xbox either, but st I think there, there's there's nothing quite like Dynasty Warriors. Being able to run into the middle of a battlefield and launch 50 people plus into the air with a giant laser beam attack from your spear is the coolest shit ever invented, and nobody will ever be able to like argue that away from me. In my mind, I don't care that the game is repetitive and you just push buttons the entire time. That's every video game. And if you ever wanted to be like in Rome Total War, but you wanted to be a guy on the battlefield who had Super Saiyan powers, that's Dynasty Warriors. Have fun. You're welcome. But I would say, like, buy, I buy a Dynasty Warriors probably once every three games. So I think the last one I bought was Samurai Warriors, the first Samurai Warriors. And then I bought Dynasty Warriors 8 just recently. And before that, I think the last one that I played was, like, Dynasty Warriors 3. So I go a few years in between each one just to keep it nice and light and fresh. Over here, was that an attack on the first day of summer? Was that, or did that count as last month? Let's go ahead and take a look. First day of summer. Okay, so we got our invasion on the first day, so we don't need to worry about that. Looks like Smash Nasty took... We need to go through everybody. It looks like some damage was dealt to armor. Let's have a look here. Equipment's fine. Equipment's fine. And unfortunately, there's no health bar or anything that we can look at for their equipment, so these... Rest assured, their equipment is damaged. It's just not destroyed yet. I've always sort of sideways hoped that there would be a system implemented where they would like get their gear auto repaired so after a battle the meditating hill some of the names are just cray cray I think what I want to do now is what are we doing over here I think we were doing one helmet over here or two helmets and if we can get the two helmets done after that we're gonna go into the little armor pieces that aren't quite such a big deal I also need to get started on this so let's get rid of some of these ramps we're going to remove all the ramps over here because unfortunately our building is gonna have to run up against the wall and there's just no way around that it's just gonna have to happen I don't want to terraform too much because you guys had expressed an interest in seeing me kind of build around topography and I understand it's fun to build around topography it can make things look really interesting and organic however in my case I'm finding that over here it's just gonna be unmanageable if I decide to do that we wanted to go with the other I think it was chiseled stone walls that we used for these ones so let's go for it I believe what I need to do, and I'm going to actually pause the game. And what I need to do is we're going to go from this back wall all the way back here. And there's one space in between it and there. So we need to go all the way back like so. And there's your one space. And so we go six out from there. And then we 
we're just gonna do this nice and slowly. So as to make sure we don't have any scripts, because obviously we want it all to look nice. All right, and so now that we got that done, we can get rid of our guidelines. Always use guidelines if you're not sure what you're doing. Just like put down temporary things to make sure that you don't get off track or anything like that. Believe me, it'll save you work later on. And finally, we're gonna go through in the terrain menu, get back to our chiseled stone walls. go seven out from right there and if this connects we've done well and there it is we did all right we didn't screw it up which is always a good thing for me I go into every situation just reasonably assuming that I'm probably gonna mess it up not much I can do about that it's part of my personality I just I mess stuff up it's what I do I was that kid like if you've got kids right now I'm that kid that when you told them to go downstairs and get the sponge out from underneath the cabinet I would go down and I would start staring at the TV and then I go and I get the sponge and I go outside and talk to my dad and then I come back and I'd be like Oh, yeah, I'm still holding the sponge and then I would come bring it to you by the time you had already gone and gotten another one by yourself That is my life in so many words And so anytime anything comes out the way that I want it to usually pretty happy about it usually pretty happy about it In here we've got to consider a few things we've got enough logs to go around. It's only summer We're probably gonna have at least five more log harvests before the beginning of the next winter trying to keep I'm worried about coal I'm trying to keep my coal all taken care of let's go down to the bottom floor and make sure that there's not a whole bunch of darkness creeping in down here and not the like I believe in a thing called love not that kind of darkness there's different darkness the darkness that's gonna be did they ever do anything after they did that single that's one of those bands that totally rocked it for about a week and then all of a sudden they vanished like they had that super awesome music video where they're fighting space aliens with guitars and they were all dressed up kind of 70s style and then they just vanished and that was that. Does the darkness still make music? I could probably go Google this, but I'm in the middle of a game right now, so I can't. So unfortunately, it falls upon you to enlighten me. That's just the way things go. Now I am going to keep this wall going out a little bit further. And it looks like we do have a really nice supply of iron up in here. So I'm going to do my best to chase it around. Sometimes you got to give iron a good chasing. Makes it more worth it once you catch it. That's the same thing with everything in life. If it wasn't for the chase, 90% of hunts would just be totally and completely boring. Looks like the iron runs over this way as well, so we may actually have the same sort of archetype on this floor as we had previously on the 70. But for now, we'll grab all of this and go back up to the top. I'm a little bit worried about things spawning down there. Not that concerned, though. Keeping an eye out for shadows here. Alright, back up to the surface. Let's do this thing. The other part that we want to concern ourselves is the installation of a lot of our stairs, which means we're going to have to get rid of these ramps over here. So let's go ahead and remove that ramp and that ramp. That's not a ramp. What is that? We'll get rid of that one and that one, and we'll just leave that as kind of like a stand-up berm, almost. And then I may have to get rid of that wall, too. Yeah, we're going to have to get rid of the wall. So let's go ahead and remove the floor from right there, and then we'll go down to the next layer. And we'll make sure that this gets mined out at some point. We'll only do moderate, or I'm sorry, we'll only do moderate modifications or minute modifications to the overall arrangement of our topography. Other than that, we'll leave it alone. It's been good to us, so we won't mess with it too much. Won't spend all of our time annihilating the natures. How are we doing on the tier 2 research? Oh good, Yas is moving right along. Yas, you level up tinkering really, really fast. That's one thing that I would like to point out about. A merchant from Zarag Kingdom has arrived. Okay. That's cool. I should probably send out diplomatic envoys to... The Misty Bread as well. We'll do that. We'll send him out because I think we've got the space right now for an extra ambassador if we wanted to have one. I still see the same brown helmets on everybody's shoulders, or on everybody's- You don't wear a helmet on your shoulders unless you're in Warhammer 40k and then wear your helmet whatever you want. Everybody knows the more helmets you have, the more your chances are, the better your chances are of surviving. So I'd put helmets on each shoulder, I'd be wearing helmets as a cup, I'd have helmets on my head on top of helmets. I mean, the more that I could have, the better. Just to ensure that maybe you'll get out, like Creed, for example. Creed has just, he's made out of hats. His entire outfit is basically just hats stitched together. 
and that's why he gets to stay inside the lore. Yas, we'll take a look to point out, you level up tinkering really, really fast. He's at 93 tinkering already, which is just an ungodly level of tinkering, and he started, I will remind you, at a tinkering of about 11. And so he started out basically tinkering handicapped, like he was very, very bad at it. He was like me, where when he plays with Legos, he comes up with complex shapes such as squares and the occasional triangle. And then by the time he got done at the workbench, he appears to have just been way, way better at whatever it was he was doing. I'm gonna put in lead floors over here. I think it'll take a long time though. So that might not be the best plan. Do I still have... what's on this floor still remaining? A smelter. I took everything else down. So yeah, we want to wait till all of our other jobs are done before we jump in on anything else. Got extra bronze helmets and stuff down here. I didn't realize we had so much extra stuff laying around. But that's good. That's really, really good. I'm gonna go to my second... Eh, We'll wait. I don't even have a weapon for him right now. My secondary guy, I think, was good with axes, and I wanted to give him a war axe because we don't have anybody with one right now. And so I wanted to have somebody running around Gimli style, just cleaving goblins in half. Hopefully, we don't get another Mant invasion. That was kind of disconcerting when we got that last one. Or disconcerting. I, I wanted to have... I, I must have missed a scout or something. I don't know. I never saw a scout. I must have missed one. I think that's the only thing that really explains the phenomenon unless you start to get mant invasions just randomly which I think you do but I don't know why are these not replanted right here let's go to our market stall we've got lots of stuff to trade so let's spend a little bit of time making friends with him pine logs yep buy out all your logs I do wish that they brought more and more with them the more and more you bought like a supply and demand type thing where they started to realize like we make a lot of money if we bring them the things that they need 2400 is gonna be our trade-off price right here I will probably sell them yak hides because we don't necessarily need them. We've got hides coming out of our ears, which really think you would think that if you washed your ears out pretty well, you wouldn't have hide inside of them, but you know what? I, I don't judge. I'm not one of those people that spends all my time looking down people's ears for cerumen plugs or whatever the hell else is going on. Oh, so nasty. Don't Google that. Definitely don't Google that. Nightmares. That's all I'm going to say about it. We could probably get rid of some wheat grain too if we wanted to. could sell off some of this yak milk for some of the stuff that we're getting out of all this. A lot of yak bones too. Sell off some of the yak bones because there's no conceivable reason why we would need that many. And... The rest of the poor bear statue. We got 21 of those. It's not, they're not poorly made. It's just a bear sitting around looking sad. It's a statue of a very sad looking bear, in case you were wondering. I'm sure you weren't, but I will enlighten you. It's not poorly made, it's just that the bear looks really, really sad in the statuette. Sell off some of these necklaces, just to kind of make up the difference here. And then we've got 92 left remaining, we'll take the strawberry wines, we will take, that's going to put me over, and they'll go into dick mode and they won't give me the thing, yeah, that's fine, whatever, I don't even care anymore. That'll restock my copper a little bit, which was a primary concern that I had running for me throughout the course of the last couple episodes. I had noticed that we had almost run out of copper, so we want to make sure that we have enough of that. Bird has passed out from exhaustion again. Like I said, practicing what he does best. He's done it right in the doorway. Could you have picked a more inconvenient spot to pass out? Like, there's a wall right there. You could have been like the village drunk and passed out right there, but no. You gotta pass out right in the doorway, so everybody that's gotta go to bed now has to step over you. Dick mode, dude. Dick mode. Why is nothing getting crafted over here? I'm a little bit worried about this. Little bit worried about all this. I do feel as though something has gone very strangely right here. Do we just not have the steel? That might be our problem. We got plenty of iron. I feel like weird things are happening right now. It's due to the fact that I think our jeweler is using up a bunch of bronze bars to replace what we just did. So we'll just have to let that happen. And as always, when I'm all out of ideas what we should do topside, it's time to go below. So let's head back down to our mining area. See how they're doing with this work down here. They're doing all right. Not doing terribly. Mining pretty quickly. 
place a torch right there. I realize that one's not spaced properly, but I just wanted to... I'm preemptively torching everything, which that's not a phrase that I would use in general civilian life. You know, I've never preemptively torched anything in my entire life. There are burn days around where I live. I don't know if they have those in Europe or other places, but in the United States we have this thing called a burn day, where if you live in California, I think maybe a huge chunk of California is just farmland. If you drive down the five, that's just all it is as far as the eye can see is just farmland. They have these things called burn days where you burn all the refuse from your farm and they do it to reduce the strain on air quality or whatever. And so I think burn days around here on Wednesdays, every Wednesday you're allowed to burn whatever refuse, like refuse you have laying around in your farm. And so on Wednesdays the sky is very smoky, but other than that, it's usually okay. I'm not a farmer, so I could be totally malinformed. In my hometown, we have orchards. We don't have farms. We have just orchards everywhere. That's what we were known for. That's how. Why, that's why my hometown was built, was because of apricot orchards. And now it's got like 110,000 people, so it's basically a reasonably sized city. And so they're starting to cut down all the orchards and everything to make room because uh, they're starting to incorporate all that extra land along the edges of the city. And when I was growing up, there were orchards everywhere, and according to my parents, it used to be even more. But every year, they cut down a few more orchards and they put in a few more housing developments, and pretty soon nobody's gonna know that there was ever orchards here at all. There's one old guy in town who lives in this big mansion at the end of a giant orchard field who just refuses to sell off his land, but I get the feeling when he dies, he's gotta be in his mid-90s now because he was old when I was a kid. And so he's still there, though. I mean, he's gotta be in his late 90s, early 90s or something at this point, but won't sell that land. They keep flashing bills at him, but I, know, I can understand. When you've got land, it's a tough thing to walk away from. I would know. I've never owned any land, but I would think that if I had land, I would be like, No, this is my land. This is the land of Splattercat. And I would just be like, This is my thing. Like, I put flags down on it and stuff. And so I could see how it would be tough to walk away from. But the orchards haven't been planted in years out there. The trees are still there. Most of them looking kind of dead. But the orchard is still out there. He's probably got a good 50, 70, 100 acres out there. All the trees are dead, never been planted again, but I think he's just waiting for the right buyer. Somebody's going to restart up the orchard business or something, maybe. But yeah, they have burn days there, too, where they cut all the, they burn all of the random limbs that they trim off the trees, because I didn't know this. But I have a friend that runs an apple orchard. That's what he does. Or an acquaintance, I guess. Not really a friend, but an acquaintance that runs an apple orchard. And he did a a video recently that he posted up on YouTube somewhere where he was showing you how to trim an apple tree properly and because that's what his family does they run an apple orchard and so I didn't realize there was like a proper way to trim an apple tree and so he was kind of going through me like this limb here this limb it's kind of an interesting thing I will say it's like the most thrilling viewing ever it's not what I would look for on a Friday night if I was trying to entertain myself but definitely interesting information to see I think there's always something interesting to be gleaned by the way that someone else lives that lives like a different lifestyle than you do so somebody that lives on a farm or lives in an orchard or lives you know in pasture land or lives on a cattle ranch they live very very differently than somebody that lives in the city like the lifestyles are not comparable in the same ways and so the way that they just go about their daily even in the way just like a job that you do in the city like a construction job very very different than tending an orchard all day there's just different types of information you have to know in order to make each job work and so I always find it interesting to see how other people work and live. That's why I always liked dirty jobs at Mike Rose shows, because I really enjoyed watching the jobs that other people do and be like, oh, that's kind of interesting. I mean, that job kind of sucks, but it's still interesting to see somebody do that job because I didn't realize how much it sucked to do that job. I appreciate it more now. Although I will point out that one of the first episodes he ever did was roofing, and I used to roof, and yeah, I will agree that roofing is pretty much the worst job ever so props to you roofers who might be watching this because I used to do that job and that is a miserable rough job especially if you live in an area like I did where it got up to like 115 120 degrees some days and you're sitting on you know you're sitting there on top of felt for eight hours a day black felt no less chalking lines all day and then throwing down battens if you're doing tile and if you're putting down shingles you're just Kind of measuring things out. I hated that. When you get to the gutter, oh my god, when you get to the valleys where you get to the valleys where the two inclines of the roof come together and you put down, you put down the, um, oh my god, I'm brain farting right now. Well, anyways, you lay down the sheet metal in the valleys and you're sitting on black felt in the sun and you've got this sheet metal down and it's reflecting sun into your face and the sun's hitting you in the back at the same time. Ugh, my least favorite part of the job. I also disliked, we had fart vents, I don't know if that's what other roofers call them, but we call them fart vents. They're these little vents that are up on the roof that connect to bathrooms for ventilation and stuff like that. And we used to 
spray paint those at the end of the day. And so I don't I think I hated that job just because it was the last job you had to do before you got to go home. And so you knew it was, it was kind of a mixed bag. It was kind of a bittersweet candy because you knew that was the last thing you had to do before you got to go home that day. But then again, it was always that one thing that was left over to do before you got home. So it was both a good thing and a bad thing simultaneously. Roofing's rough. I don't do a whole lot of tile jobs anymore. I don't think I think I've only laid down tile like three or four times in the last decade. Everybody's doing shingles now, and nobody does shakes anymore. This can't be an interesting. If you don't know what those are, so basically shingles, it's like tar paper, and then they sprinkle a bunch of stone on top of it, and that's a shingle. Your house probably has shingles. Tile, pretty self-explanatory. They have those on Pueblo type housing, and then a lot of people like tile. It's super expensive, but it's a pain in the ass to install. And it's kind of, it's difficult to work on tile because if you step on them wrong, they break. And so if you've got new guys on your workforce, it's a nightmare because the new guys are always stepping on the tile wrong and breaking it. You should be like, damn it, Ted, what are you doing, man? You just, I gotta take out that entire line right now. I gotta hammer in more tile because you just met a legendary goblin sausage. I wonder if it was legendary when it was laying on the ground or if it was legendary after we crafted it. Goblins coming up in here with legendary wieners attacking us. Just like, well... <laughs> It ain't legendary anymore, it's dinner. Gross. Yeah. But anyways... Shakes are like these little pieces of wood. It's basically just a wooden roof. That's the best way. It's basically tiles made out of wood. And nobody gets those anymore. It's just outdated, they're difficult, they're flammable, and so forth. It's just like a bad idea, don't have that. You used to have a lot of flat top roofs too, back in like the 70s and whatnot. I've never done a flat top roof. I've seen other people do flat top roofs where you gotta like tar mop them and shit like that, but it's tar mopping. <laughs> you can't pay me enough money. Nope. Tar mopping is exactly what it sounds like. You get this big thing of molten tar, and that's how you seal a flat top roof is with tar, and you get this big thing of molten tar, and you're already up on a roof in the sun, and the tar is obviously black. You gotta get in like these booty waiter type things. And you take this big thing called a tar mop and you spread the tar out evenly even though it's boiling hot because you can only work with tar when it's boiling otherwise it starts to get very viscous it resists flow quite well and so it's just nasty nasty job in fact most roofers I know nowadays won't take tar mopping jobs anymore they're like eh update your house get a new roof I'm not doing it it's not worth the money you get paid I think I've talked to three or four different roofers at this point that just flat out refuse to do tar mopping jobs just nope uh-uh and that's because working with tar in any respect is pretty miserable. Hope this isn't boring to all of you. I don't know. A honey badger's been spotted now. There's not a whole lot going on in this episode, so I'm just kind of filling space with what I used to do. Most jobs you're going to see nowadays are shingles. Supplied by Elk, and there's a couple other companies that do it, but... The company I worked for was supplied by Elk, and so all of our roofing supplies were from Elk. Definitely a rough job. Roofing is one of those things that'll take the... It'll make you strong, but it'll also break you down pretty fast. There's not a whole lot of like 60 year old roofers out there who don't have blown out backs and messed up knees and ruined ankles and things like that just because you spent the last 40 years standing on an incline, bent over trying to measure lines and do trigonometry and hammering things. It's just like, it's a, it's a job that's rough on your back. It's not as rough as say like the guys that operate jackhammers. I know those guys consistently have terrible, terrible back problems. But, I think given the fact that I'm running on, on just random subjects right now, I think I'm going to break off the episode. My name is Splattercat, thank you for joining me in the Nerd Castle for yet another iteration of our Nopton Nomoria playthrough. Coming to a close, I think. I think we're getting pretty close to, to tapping this one out. I don't know. I'm not sure when I'm going to break it off because I'm still having fun. It's just kind of we've run out of things to do. I think it'll probably be whenever we get done inventing things and I get to show you guys guns. So anyways, take care out there everybody. I'll see you in the next episode.